Hey everyone, it's The Diplomat, and we are on part 46 of the Chris Watts Discovery read-through, and here we resume on page 1182. Uh, we pick up uh, where Coder and Chris were talking about his conversation with Shanann regarding marriage and separation the morning of uh, Monday, August 13th. And uh, just in this part, uh, pay close attention to uh, parts where Coder is, uh, it, you know, talking through things, but using uh, words like me and I, you'll see he's kind of re, uh, reliving uh, parts that Chris is saying. So there are some parts where I'm speaking as Coder, but he's speaking as Chris. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, I think it's a little bit um, halfway through and through uh, parts after that, but... Uh, just pay particular attention to that, um, but I think you'll be able to tell who I am speaking as. All right, so let's get right into it. Okay, so I'm um, all right. So I know it's hard to talk about. Um, you mentioned that there was a hard conversation the two of you had about uh, separation, your marriage and separation. Now that you've had a little bit of time to think, Looking back on that conversation, can you connect the dots between both of you being upset and crying and here we are now, she and the kids are gone? What what do you think about that? I think about like that I caused this. Like did I make her feel like she needed to leave? And like did she really feel like the things she was saying? Did she really feel the same? Did she really feel like right? Did this connection did she really feel all of that or that she's just saying it? Maybe just like us falling out of love did that. Was that really registering to her at that point in time or did it register after I left to go to work? And then she's just like, you know, I'm just going to leave. Okay. It's like, and I'm not, she, she laid back down. She was still there when I left. Okay. But like maybe she sat there and and thought about it like do I really need to stay here right now okay he doesn't love me maybe I should just go can you really get into that conversation with me like what I want to know is you obviously had a very deep relationship with her she's your wife but it's gonna be easy for me to listen to what that was said and and maybe think that there are some clues about it I mean, she had just laid down and cried a, a little bit longer and something happened to her. Or maybe she did get frustrated and left. So, let's, uh, can we recreate that conversation? Mm-hmm. So, tell me what happened. So, I, I crawled back into bed. So, sorry, let's, uh, from, she gets home late at night. Okay, let's start from that point. Okay, so she got home about 2 a.m., and were you already home? I, I was, I was passed out. Okay. Yeah, so like I, I felt her get into, in the bed and that was about it. At about 4 a.m., that's when my alarm, uh, that's when my alarm went off to go to work. Okay. That's when I got ready and everything and so she gets in at 2, alarm goes off at 4 a.m. Okay. Mm-hmm. And, and you were sleeping the whole time? Oh, yeah. Okay, so the conversation hasn't started. No. Okay. No, so uh, when my alarm goes off, that's when I try and get ready for work. I, I crawl back in bed and we have that conversation. So you wake up at 4. Mm-hmm. From at 4 a.m., then, what until you start the conversation? I get dressed, get my uh, get my clothes on, brush my teeth, get a drink, all that kind of stuff. Okay, shower? No. Okay. Shower, like, yeah, the night before. Okay. What do you do for a living? I work in the oil and gas. Okay. So then it doesn't matter if you go to work without a shower. Okay. Doesn't really matter. All right. It's going to be bad anyway. 
Yeah, so then you wake up, you get ready. I'm sorry I interrupted you. You're fine. Um, so then, so then what time are we talking about when you're ready to talk with her? About 4.15 a.m. or so. Okay. And so she was asleep from the time she got in from 2 a.m. to 4. Mm-hmm. Or 4.15. You wake up at 4. 4.15 you're ready. Okay. And at 4.15 you start talking. Mm-hmm. Why did you talk at 4.15 in the morning? I felt like I needed to talk to her face to face. Okay. Because like I wanted to say something m much. I'm I, I like when she was like in Arizona, I didn't want to do it through text and I wouldn't do it uh, through a phone call. Okay. Like I got back in bed and like I needed to I needed to talk to her about it cuz she told me she told me like when she was when she was going to fly back that she wanted to get up with me so she could take a shower. So she wanted to get the airport off her. What do you mean when she got back? When she flew back in. From Phoenix? Yeah. Okay, okay. She told you let's have a talk? No, she wanted to get up with me so she could take a shower to get the airport off her because she was, oh, oh. Like her flight was delayed. Oh, okay. Her flight was supposed so it was supposed to get in at eleven, but okay. It didn't leave until eleven. Okay. And so did she call you or did she text you? I think there was a call. Okay. On that one. All right. And then so at four fifteen, what happens? That was when I crawled back in bed I was I woke her up okay and then obviously I talked to her about how I was feeling about how I felt like what's been going on with us for the last what what she's seen in like the last six weeks because we were she was in North Carolina and I was down there just for the last week but from what uh, just being apart and just like figuring out who people are mm-hmm it's like the best, honestly, like the best way people really find out who they are is to t spend time apart. I agree. And she kind of just like, you need to see yourself and all. And then on the last week, that's when I went back to North Carolina and I was there for the last week there. Okay. And when we were together, we could feel like it was, it wasn't there, that spark. Hmm. I know that's kind of cliche, but that spark, sure, wasn't there anymore. Mm hmm And on that night, I, I told her that morning, early that morning, I told her, like, the disconnection, it's, it's there. Like, it's not going away. Like, that connection we had when, in the beginning, it, it's not there anymore. Because, like, I don't feel like the love we had was there anymore. Okay. And it was just like, I don't feel like, I mean, if we want to stay together for the kids, I'm not sure if that's going to work. Mm-hmm. Like, bring up, and that's what you told her? Yeah. Okay. Like, having another baby, bringing this into a relationship, do you think this is going to work? Mm. With us being together, or separation, I, I think, is going to be the best possible route for us. And that's when, like, all the crying and everything proceeded, and it was just, like, it was just very hard just to talk about that. Mm hmm But I needed to do it face-to-face. -face. Okay. And I needed, like, I needed her, I needed to see her face, like, while the, I, I couldn't uh, text. Yeah. Phone, whatever. I needed to be face-to-face -face and able to see her and know that she was going to be at least reciprocating back to me. Oh, what did she say? She said that it was, I mean, it was, sh she wants, she wanted to kind of work on it. Mm-hmm. But if that's the way I was feeling, then she respects that. Okay. And she said that most of the time when you have kids and you have a relationship where people, like, they don't, they don't love each other, where they fall out of love, a disconnection, that having kids, even bringing a new baby into the, equation doesn't always work is 
as keeping like you know the couple happy and the kids happy it's like it almost is like better if right if it was different mm -hmm. different sides yeah you don't want to spend your whole marriage just like each other faking for the kids yeah and that's that's one thing okay that is and i hear that like but at that's totally accurate okay i mean you don't want to be you want to be people parading around with like a mask on when their kids are around and then when the kids go to sleep you just go your separate ways okay like that's what i don't want okay and that's why that's why we were to talk that's why we were talking about that separation that night okay and that's why that's why i got so emotional right there okay emotional for you too oh yeah i was bawling my eyes out quick aside we all know how much of a lie that was he seems unable to be able to cry which does that mean he's unable to feel okay um so then as a result so then how long did that conversation last it lasted about 4 15 when we started we were talking about the house as well okay um what did you say about the house like we needed to sell the house like there's no way like we can stay in this house and have another kid and able and being able to just keep everything afloat mm. And she was like, well, where do you want to move to? I was like, well, we could move to Brighton. We could move, uh, uh, and it says an un unintelligible area. Uh, Chris again. Okay, so I think it was Brighton. We can move to Longmount. We can move, like, you know, wherever. Mm-hmm. So much cheaper. Okay. And she was like, well, because she had already contacted the uh, realtor the week before her email oh to see like what she thought and that's when like i i actually contacted uh ann that day like well like pretty much probably about eight o'clock that day who's ann uh, the realtor oh okay yeah and that's we're like if we can get the ball rolling like see what she thought so you said your wife called a week before to the realtor it emailed her okay so then this conversation early in the morning wasn't a shock to either of you. No. Or a surprise. It was the next step. Yeah. In a long conversation you have to have. Mm-hmm, yeah. Leading up to, uh, okay. Yeah, it was, this was on like a, it's like way, like a big thing we had to, like it was, yeah. Just like this was, okay. It wouldn't hit, that's why it was just an emotional conversation. That part um, was a little strange. But um, you can certainly go to the video if you want to get that part uh, more accurate. Sure. Like, because it wasn't just like, oh, it come out, came out of nowhere, or left field type of thing. Like, we knew, like, something wasn't, we knew about what, about we wanted to do with the house we knew like what what's going on with it really we knew, we knew something was okay is it accurate to say that uh, then the time when you were away from each other when she was in north carolina the time that she was in arizona maybe uh, the two of you knew that you could have been uh, that there could have been time you were talking and so when you finally get together it's we can't wait another second we're gonna talk mm-hmm is that right okay now tell me if it's wrong no no you're 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 right okay okay so then the conversation starts at 4 15 you talk about each other and your marriage you talk about the house and then what that's when the conversation ended and we talked that's when she said she's going to take her friends or take her friend uh, to take her and the kids to a friend's house who is uh, who is which friend that's when she she did not say that's the uh so she did say i'm taking the kids to a friend's house yeah and you sure she said that yeah you're positive 
Yes. Okay, that's good. Um, uh, now we're back to the blowing off steam. Yeah. A probability, which we like, right? Yes, that's what I like. Okay, um, so let's, you know, if we're going to play the DVR, let's rewind five minutes. So we're at the house. You're talking about the house. Uh, you're saying this isn't going to work with the kid. We're going to have to sell this house. Then how do you remember what led to her talking about the kids? As far like taking to her friend's house? Yeah, like what what conversation did you guys have? That's when I rolled out of bed and that's when she she pretty much told me like I'm taking the kids to a friend's house that and I'll be back later. Are you sure she said she'll be back later? Yeah. On a scale of 1 to 10, how positive are you? That's a 10. A 10? Yeah. Okay. So she said, I'm going to take the kids to a friend's house, but I'll be back later. Why? I, I, from what I just told her, I, uh, that doesn't make sense though, because she, I, I know, you'd be at work. When did she have to leave? That's the thing, like, I'm not sure why she wanted to go somewhere. Okay. But that's what she wanted, like, maybe she didn't want to be in the house after what we were just talking about. Fair enough. You just talked about it, yeah. It's no longer um, mentally, uh, emotionally her house then. Uh-huh. Okay, so let's focus on... I'm going to take the kids to my friend's house. What does that mean? Hopefully someone that she trusts. Hopefully it's someone that she knows pretty well. And hopefully maybe they had a kid that Bella and Celeste can play with. But you have no idea who that would be. Because we have exhausted all of them. They, all the people. Okay. Is that, does that surprise you? Because I don't know your wife, but maybe that's something that's in her wheelhouse. Did that surprise you that she didn't uh, say that and did that? It doesn't surprise me that she went somewhere like she was, that could have been a play date. Okay. But she's very vague on the fact that she just said she was going to a friend's house. Okay. And didn't say who. Okay. That's why I text her like if you could tell me like where the kids are. What time did you text her? That was seven seven forty. Okay. And no word. No word from her, obviously. No, no. Okay. So then we're at the... I'm going to take the kids. I'm going to go to a friend's house. You sure she didn't say I'm going to take them somewhere to a hotel or to... N no, no. You're positive. She said, I'm positive. To a friend's house. Yeah. And not just someone's house, but a friend's house. Yeah, because, like, if, if it was a hotel, I would have definitely asked the question, like, why are you going to a hotel? Yeah, okay. That, I wouldn't, though. Yeah. Where can we look to find a friend that you might not know about? Honestly, Facebook's the only place. Facebook? Because, okay. Because that's the one she frequents. Okay. And the only place. What's her Facebook account or her username? It's Shanann Watts. Just regular Shanann Watts. Oh, they've, they've had access on her phone. S-H-A-N-A-N-N. -N. A-N-N. -N. And so they can... I think they can log into the phone, right? I think... They're in her phone, right? Oh, yeah, they... Okay. Just got uh, to hit the icon, and it's right there. So, right. Uh, they can they can get it. They can do whatever they want. And they can... Okay, all right. It, it, it doesn't take... Uh, mu it's always logged in. Okay. Um, doesn't she do something online? Didn't she have an online presence or something? It's with Thrive, the direct sales business. Is that like her job? Yeah. And something, it's called what? Thrive. Yeah, the company's called Lavelle, but the, I'm sorry, the 
the par- the company's called Lavelle. Lavelle. Yeah, L E hyphen B B E L. That's really L V E L, but it doesn't matter. L E hyphen B E L. Okay. Yeah, that's like the product called Direct. Okay, what is it? It's a probiotics, uh, probiotics of vit- vitamins and minerals. Okay, it's and it's all plant based stuff. It's it's work works very well. A dietary supplement. Okay, and what does she do for them? Uh, she's a promoter. Okay, sales. Yes. Okay, is, um, I think I've heard of Thrive. It's just like you try to tell personally to people you know. Okay. So she doesn't have a storefront that she works at. No, not at all. Cloud-based. Okay, home-based. Yeah, she can work from home. It lets her work from anywhere. And so where would a where would a list of contacts be at Thrive that we can s- go start talking to people? Oh, we we've already gave them all to them. Like everybody that she contacts through Thrive, they have them in the uh, the police have them. Yeah, in that phone? Mm Mm-hmm. Through what, an app? No, just like all the people that she contacts throughout the day. Okay. Like from Addie and Sam, and they're all in there. Addie and Sam, who are they? Addie, uh, one of her uh, leaders back east. Okay. Sam, another leader back, uh, someone supporting her sales? Yeah, yeah. What about people who, because she's in sales, what about customers she's trying to reach out to because she doesn't even know, uh, how does she do that? A messenger. You message strangers? Uh, She, either it's her Facebook page, like pages, because it's public. Okay, so she has friends on friends of Facebook. Yeah. That might someday think that they won't thrive. They can reach her. Mm Mm-hmm. How else does she do it? It's mainly just through Facebook. Through Facebook. Yeah, like if she has, uh, she might go on Instagram every once in a while. She'll like sync them both so that, okay, it goes to both. But uh, Facebook, and what was it, Instagram? Yeah. And what's her Instagram username? I have no clue. You have no idea? No. Right. Uh, it might be Shanann Thrives, like Shanann with a underscore and Thrives. Okay, so you don't do Thrive? I, I do, but uh, she kind of runs it. Okay, do you do it separately from her then? It's it's a different team, but okay. I'm under her. Okay. Like it's not, it's like she signed me up under her. Okay. So whatever I do helps her. Right, okay. Um, What else are we not thinking of? So let's continue with, uh, I'm going to my friend's house, and then what happens? Uh, That's when I go downstairs, make my protein shake, get my lunch, everything ready, uh, because you're not going back to bed at this point. No. Okay. Because i got to go to work now. And this is somewhere near 5 a.m.? 5.15. Okay. And that's when I go out, do my truck, load everything in it, and 5.30, I'm okay. Or about what the neighbor thinks at about 5.26, I'm gone. Okay, and she's still at the house then? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, because, I mean, she never came back downstairs. Um, And explain your house to me. Do, do Do you leave through downstairs? I leave, uh, yeah, go downstairs, and you leave through the garage. So then this conversation happened upstairs. Yes. In the master bedroom? Yes. Okay. Um, And you're sure that she didn't come down? Like, once I was in the garage, I was in the garage, I didn't see anything after that. Did you see her car in there? Yes. Okay. And you left, and her car was in there? Yes. Yes. So it's clear she's in there. Mm Mm-hmm. Just trying to determine this. I need the time she disappeared. And then, so from 5.30, then what? That's when I I went to work. Okay, all right. 
And then 7.40s the next time I texted her. And why did you text her then? I was like, I hadn't heard from her, and I was just seeing if she knew, like, where, if or just seeing where she went. Texted Shanann, right? Yes. It's Shanann? Yeah, and, and asked if she could tell me where she was taking the kids. Oh. Okay, so at this point, it's two hours later, and you're thinking, I wonder where she's going. Yeah. Okay. And is that text on your phone? Yes. Okay. Huh. Then all the way, what happened between 7.40 a.m. and noon? I was wor I was outside working. Okay. Uh, noon texted Shanann to call me, and that's going to be in your phone, too. Okay. 12.10 doorbell visitor. That's when Nicole was at the door, at the door, and it pinged my phone. Okay. What's she doing there, then? Uh, then ten minutes later, you call Nicole to see what was going on, and she couldn't, and she told me she couldn't get a hold of Shanann either, and that her shoes were next. Whose shoes? Shanann's shoes? Yep. Dakota again now. We're, we're next to the door, and her car was in the garage next to the door inside or outside. Inside, she, there is like a little, like a little small rectangular window next to the door. Oh, okay. You can see right in there. Does that mean anything to you that Shanann, uh, her shoes are, are her shoes always by the door? Yeah. Okay, so when you come into the house, does she usually come in the front door? Most of the, unless she drives in. Okay. And then she goes in the garage. Okay, because that was just from the previous night when she came in. Oh, okay. So then think about this for a minute. If she comes in, drives in with, what's the other car, a Lexus? Yep. She drives in the Lexus, comes in. She comes in the garage door that way if she's driving the, the garage in the, into the garage. But since Nicole dropped her off that previous night, she came through the front door. Oh, someone else was driving. The Lexus was already there. Yeah, the Lexus is already home. Okay, so that makes sense then. Yeah. Okay, so you you see what we're trying to do? Uh, we're trying to be like, did she walk out or was she taken out, right? Yeah. Okay, so, um, so then it makes sense that her shoes are still right there. Mm-hmm. But she's obviously not wearing those shoes, okay? All right, uh, keep going. Uh, looking 1240, a few more efforts by Nicole to reach her. How do you know? Because that's when I was, she was still at the front door and, oh. I was, I was, to, to reach her at the front door? Yeah. Okay, uh, 1 p.m. I'm now on my way home to check on my family. Uh, is that just because you're worried with, based on the conversation? Yeah. And, oh, uh, had the police contacted you by then? No. Okay. To, uh, I arrive, I'm, I'm sorry, what? But, uh, Nicole says she's probably gonna call the cops. Okay, all right. Now it sounds like Nicole's pretty worried. Mm-hmm. More worried than you. I was, I, once she couldn't get anything out of her and nothing was going on at the house, I was like, I, I got to go home. Quick aside, that's a killer line from Coder. And that's no question mark. That's a period at the end of that. More worried than you. Um, I think that was a nice shot he took there without going over the top. Um, back to Coder. But it sounds like Nicole was more worried. Y yeah, because like most of, like if she doesn't text me, like I understand that. Okay. Sometimes that happens. Okay. But for her not to get back to her... Uh, okay. Uh, group... Direct sales group. Okay. That was very unorthodox. Okay. And you had a pretty tough morning with her. Yeah. So she's again decompressing. Yes. As you said, uh, so it's okay that she's not texting you maybe, but you're going to come home and check. Yeah. Just in case. Mm-hmm. But Nicole's freaking out. Mm-hmm. 
Is that right? Yeah. And and I'm I'm walking myself through this. You tell me no, 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 that's not what happened. No, I mean like she like for her not to get back to her friends like that, like that's not normal cuz she, like she'll get like tons of text messages throughout the day from okay, direct sales. All right. Like if she doesn't get back to me, I just assume that she's busy. Okay. I'm now on my way home to check my family. 2 p.m. I arrive home, open the garage door. How? I have um, my uh, button. Okay. Is it in your truck? Yeah. Okay. And you get inside the house. Shanann, Bella, and Celeste. Uh, who are Bella and Celeste? Those are my kids. Okay. Oh, are not in the house. Oh, okay. Shanann's wedding ring is on uh, on her nightstand. Her nightstand. Her phone's on the couch. Her purse is still there. The medicine for the kids is still here. The car and the car seats are still here. There's no sign of them anywhere. Frederick police officer and detectives are asking Nicole and I questions about where she could have gone or she could be with. Uh, how did that go? Uh, we tried to go through from what we could... Uh, what we could gather, like, where she could have gone. Okay. As far as I could, what we saw in the house didn't really make sense. Okay. But that's when we were, that's when we were just, like, calling. Started to look through the phone and just kind of called around. Once we found the phone and Nicole knew what the passcode was, uh, I can see what, what transpired. And obviously, there was, like, 50-something text messages that had came that was like all through okay all right because her phone was off okay what do you mean the phone was off it was off when you found it it was off 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 was the battery dead no what do you make of that i have no clue like why was it off and why was it not with her it's weird right because if you're saying that she does a ton of texting, marketing, and sales, and calling certain people back, okay, uh, how would it turn off? You'd have to turn it off. Okay. Because it was the at like 50% or so, I think. Are you sure? Okay, and it was on the couch? Mm-hmm. So, well, what do you make of that? So, you, usually it's not right by her nightstand. Okay. That's usually where it always is. Nightstand in the bedroom? Yeah. Okay, anything else about that? No, that that is weird that it was sitting like on the couch cushion like right there. Okay. So can we back up a tiny bit? You come home. No one had been in the house. No. Okay. No one could get in the house, is that right? Yeah, unless you had a garage door opener. Okay. And that's how you got in? Uh, then unintelligible. Uh, Coder, so at this point, you get there. Are the police there at this point? Yes. So you with the police, Nicole, that's it? Her son. Her son. What? What's her son's name? I think it's Nick. I think, yeah, I think it's Nick. I think it's Nick. Nick. And so you and Nicole aren't besties per se, you and Nicole? Oh, no, like, we're, I mean, we're friends, but, yeah, my wife and her are really good friends. Really. Okay, and so, Nick, you don't spend much time with Nick. No. Okay, why is Nick there? Uh, he was just with her, with his mom. Okay, is there anything weird about Nicole and Nick? Not that I really think of. Do you think anything about your wife not being around has anything to do with Nicole and Nick? I, I would hope not. I mean, like, Nicole is one of her good friends. Okay. I don't think they could have done, like, I don't think they could have done anything, like, as far as, like, helping her get out and then being so emotional when they couldn't find her. I don't think, like, they, I don't think they'd be capable, capable of that. Okay. So then they're they're at home, um, police officers there. Mm-hmm. Um, then walk me through that. So as they go through the house, we're all... Do you immediately go through the house? 
like I open the garage door, I just I just go into the house. I'm I mean I'm looking like as I go in the garage door, I'm not looking. Is the police officer saying, hey, let me talk to you for a minute? No. No? Okay. What? What's the vibe like? Uh, I just, I go up there, shake his hand, and I'm like opening the garage door at the same time. Okay. And then I go through, and then they're waiting at the front door. I go and, and open that up, and then they come in. Oh, so they didn't go in the garage door with you? Okay. Well, they, they went in the garage. They didn't come in the way I did. Okay, so then they, everybody goes in. Okay, and then what? I run upstairs. I look in the bedrooms. Okay, and because that's where she would be? That's where I w would expect. So is this a standard house? Upstairs, bedrooms, downstairs, living area? Yeah. Okay. And there's one office downstairs. Okay, and then it's, so then upstairs, and then what? I, I go into Bella's room, go into Celeste's room, playroom, master bedroom. I'm looking everywhere, like bathroom and nothing. Okay, and then, like, found the night, uh, found the wedding ring right there on the nightstand, and then, right then? Yeah. Okay. They, that weird? She only takes it off if she colors her hair. Okay. And actually, she'd already colored her hair like a week before or so. Okay. Um, that was just like probably a result of our conversation. Oh, I would think. Okay. And then Nick finds her phone on the couch. And why did he find her phone on the couch? What's he looking for there? I, I, I don't know. He was, he was looking for uh, clues. Uh, clues, just, okay, looking, was looking around too, and he's, he happened to just run across it right there on the couch, and, okay, R right there on the cushion, so he found the, it's not as though you're calling him to find it, he just found it, yeah, okay, then what, so the, um, so that, we just told the officer that we found the phone, we turned it on, uh, Nikki gets the passcode in, because it, it was a four-digit passcode before, and it was a six-digit, uh, this one, this time, so, and that's a 13119, yeah, she knew her friend's passcode, yeah, I didn't, because it used to be 2385, but when she changed it to six, how did Nikki know? Maybe she knew it over the weekend, because I'd never seen a six-digit passcode on her phone. Is that normal to you? No. Nicole might share her passcode with somebody. I wouldn't think so. That's. Uh, do you know her to have done that before? No, because she's only told me her passcode before, or like her, I mean her phone's her lifeline, so. Okay. Uh, is she close with Nicole? Uh, she's, I mean, decently close. How long have they known each other? Probably, uh, at least over a year. How did they meet? Uh, when her mom, when Shanann's mom lived here, they, uh, her, Shanann's mom worked at, uh, she was a hairdresser, dresser, and Nikki was, like, one of the managers. Okay. Nicole, sorry. Okay, and then does, uh, did she get her hair done there or something by Nikki? No. Okay. That was just her, Shanann's mom and Nicole were friends, and then Shanann got Nicole into Thrive, and, oh, okay. It went from there. All right. So now we're at finding the phone, Nicole unlocking the phone, then what? Waiting for the, everything to load up and watching all the text messages pop up, phone calls, uh, missed calls pop up and went from there and what were they they were just people call and asking like are you okay where are you type of things okay all right um okay then what the police officer he looks at the phone just kind of look just kind of looks through to see to see if like if anything looks you know odd at any of the text messages mm-hmm and then um, I walk downstairs, and I'm looking around down there to seeing if I see anything else, and I don't. Okay. 
I mean, nothing out of the ordinary. Okay. And then, um, I think that was three or four. Yeah, at four o'clock. That's when, um, because the, na- cause the neighbor, yeah, that was the officer I had went over to the neighbor's house to see if he saw anything. And uh, whose idea was that? I think it was the officer's. Okay. He just went over there. Um, and then that's when a neighbor called him back over to show him uh, he got, he had some stuff from the other night. Okay. To show him like whatever he had and that, that put motion on it. Okay. Who originally called the police? Uh, Nicole. Okay. And is that the time when you're telling me you're coming home and she's freaking out? She said that she told me she was going to call the police, but I said, okay, I'm coming home. It's like, let me, let me look through everything. Let's see what's going on here. And I, on my way home, I, that's when she called me and said, the cops are here. Okay. All right. Uh, Okay. Uh, Frederick police officer and detectives are asking Nicole and I questions about where she could have gone. Who she could be with. 4 p.m. Police checks neighbor's security footage and question them as well. Okay. Have we talked about that? Is that what we... Mm-hmm, we're okay? That's where we're at. Uh, anything else about that? No, I mean, it just shows Nicole dropping her off, but her not walking up, and it shows me loading my truck up. Okay. At the time, I told you I left. Okay, officer, detective, and sergeant come by to search the house and ask some more questions. How did that go? They just uh, had me sign the paperwork to search the house. Okay, and I just waited outside and let them. Okay, go th- you know go through the house. That there's a missing persons warrant, I guess. True. Okay, and did uh, did they find any other clues? No. Okay. I'm- Begin calling around to anyone I know that could know something or maybe see Shanann. Calling locals, hospitals, and hostels as well. 7.30 p.m. Friends Nick and Amanda come by to show support. Okay, so wait. So 6 p.m. Begin calling around to anyone I know that could know something or maybe seen Shanann. What happened there? Same thing. Like everybody that I've talked to, it's like, they hadn't heard from her. They hadn't seen her. They nothing, and a call on and then it says unintelligible for them. Uh, coder, who's helping you to make these calls? That's just me. Just you. At this point, that's were you by yourself? I was by myself. I'm I'm sure Nicole and other people were doing that while they were gone. Okay, because they were gone at this point. Uh, where did Nicole go? Back to her house. Back to her house? She was there when they came back to search the house. Nicole was? She was parked outside. When is this? 5 p.m. 5 o'clock? Yeah, she was parked outside. Okay, did she come in and help them? No. Why not? Well, because they told me to wait outside. Okay, fair enough. Is is there any weapons in your house? No. Okay, um, if we wanted to bring a lot more people with a lot more tools and tricks to your house, um, can we do that tonight? It's up to you. Okay. Uh, I was going to stay at, fr- at a friend's house. I was on my way over there. Quick aside here. That's very telling statement or answer that Chris gives. Coder, when Coder says there, if we wanted to bring a lot more people with a lot more tools and tricks to your house, can we do that tonight? And then Chris's response, it's up to you. Um, any father, any parent missing their kids and their spouse is not going to answer it's up to you. They may actually be asking the, the the agents first what else can you do to figure it out um so the fact that he leaves it up to them and doesn't plea for them to bring all the tools and tricks that they have is extremely revealing and these detectives are well trained and experienced right so 
you know, obviously Coder's picking up on all of this, and it, it must just be a huge red flag going off. Okay. When I, I spoke to you, you were going to stay at a friend's house? I was. Okay. If we were to get into your house without you there, how would we do it? Uh, punch the passcode in the front, uh, 2385. Okay. That's the garage passcode? No, that's the front door. And it, uh, I, I thought you said there was a latch or something preventing you from getting in. I, I know, but if you don't latch, it's, it's unlatched now? Yeah. Okay. Um, what you might think about that, I think it's a good, great idea. All right. What do you think? I was just going to go to a friend's house because I couldn't stay another, I couldn't stay last night. I couldn't sleep there. Uh, who, what friend's house? Uh, Nick and Amanda. Oh, is that her friends or your friends? They're both of our friends. Okay. I run with Nick. Okay, and, and when you say hers, is that your wife or is that Nicole's? My wife. Your wife, Sh Shanann's friends. Mm-hmm, yeah. Okay, Nick and Amanda, um, I think they're waiting outside outside right now, actually. Oh, are they? Uh, were they the ones I saw on TV? More than likely. Okay. Uh, one bald guy? Young, young kid with a brown ball cap. Yeah, Colorado something, maybe. Yeah, that's Nick. Okay, that was Nick. Okay, I thought Nick was... No, wait, Nicole's... What's Nicole's son? Nick. Just there is two Nicks now. Yeah, okay, so Nicole's son is Nick. Yeah, and your friend is Amanda... Uh, Amanda and Nick. Yeah. Are they married? Yes. Oh, okay, okay, all right. Uh, I go, I should say, like, Nick and Amanda, but that he was giving their last name there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, I know that, their name. They showed up at the house at some point, right? Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, good friends? Mm-hmm. And no reason to worry about them? No. How do you and Nick, uh, how do you and Shanann know them? Uh, Amanda through Thrive, or uh, actually Amanda was at Primrose, at the uh, where the kids went to school. Okay. She used to be director there. Oh. And once she left, uh, when she didn't, when she left a, a director position, she left to go to a different school. That's when Shanann got her on Thrive and became friends and, and me and Nick started running. Okay, that's all right. Um... Friends, Nick and Amanda, come round to show support. Friend, is that Lauren? Yes. Uh, who's that? Uh, Shanann's high school friend. Okay. Lives out here. And how'd she, how'd she find out about all of this? Uh, Facebook. And so did you ask them who and where Shanann might be? Oh, yeah, like Shanann, uh, Lauren and Shanann were actually supposed to meet up that day. Uh, did what? To meet up at the house in this pregnancy pal thing. At your house? Mm-hmm. Uh, what time? I uh, don't know. Was there any communication about that? Uh, not to me. How do you know? Uh, that was the first that I'd heard of it because she said she was supposed to, they were supposed to meet up that day. Oh, when she came over at eight? Yeah. She said... Holy cow, we were going to meet it together or something like that. Yeah, like she she had and she had heard about f everything on Facebook about Shanann being missing and she's like, yeah, her and uh, her and I were supposed to uh, Lauren said her and I were supposed to meet up and do a little pregnancy pal thing. Is Lauren pregnant? Yes. Okay. Uh, first kid? Third. Okay. And so uh, both third kids. So they were just going to meet up because they're expectant mothers. Yeah, they were probably just going to just hang out. Yeah, I mean, probably haven't seen each other in a while. Okay, I ain't worried about her, though. Okay, who are you worried about? Anybody that I know right now, like, if they have not told me anything, it's it drive me nuts. This is driving me nuts because, like, there's no way... Like, the people that I know that have kids, 
that could have helped her that if if she's at somebody's house right now like they would have had to say something but now with all that's going on there's no way they could have kept their mouth shut by now so then who are you worried about honestly like i can't really say like if i'm worried about anybody right now as far as like any of her friends that i know yeah all of them are showing like their deep concern about what's going on right now okay and i think that that deep concern that can't be faked okay so then who are you worried about it has to be somebody i don't know honestly okay the only thing that i can think of is something somebody i don't know okay does your gut tell you that shanann and the kids walked out or that they were taken out yesterday i would have said they walked out today i, I would have said um, i'm leaning the other direction okay friends dave uh, dave and uh, jeremy he's just giving last names uh, they come by to show support uh, who are they uh, dave he he when i worked for ford he ran an auto body shop he actually worked for boulder uh, county sheriff's department now oh okay and jeremy i worked he was worked in the sales department at ford when i was a uh, tech mm -hmm. and he works in another ford dealership now okay um, and jeremy jeremy's uh, the daughter just watched the kids over that that past weekend too so we know them pretty well okay what's his daughter's name mckenna okay was she the one watching the kids the night before mm-hmm okay i saw her name in a report or something um how did that go with dave and jeremy uh good they were just you know they're just there to show support and just you know chill out in the kitchen just the two of them uh that just me yeah me and and them and lauren all ha had moved on by then oh yeah everybody else was gone by then okay um and when they come over to show support um what were you guys talking about just talking about like what could have happened like do you think she do you think she could have gone somewhere do you think she's actually taken like was like just random questions like that just in and then they're just talking about this other stuff to get to kind of get things off my head a little bit okay okay um 10 o'clock i lay in bed and proceed to take calls from friends and family members right uh, how did that go just answering uh, nobody could sleep as far as east coast anything like you know addy sam who's addy and sam again Addie, uh, they're leaders in Thrive. Okay. They're people that Shanana reaches up to. Okay, have we talked to them? Oh, yeah, he talked to them on the phone. You have? I've talked, uh, yeah, I, I texted them right there. It's all on there. Okay. And so the real live communication since we couldn't find Shanann. Yeah, like that. With them? Okay, have police talked to them? I believe so. Okay, just on the phone? Yes. Are they in North... I guess it would be Carolina. No, they're like... Okay, Northeast. Uh, northeast what? Like uh, Baltimore. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, over there. Okay, all right. Who else calls? See, her, her mom uh, talked to my parents, talked to my sister talked to or, or texted with kelly that's another she lives in new jersey uh who else jeremy dave uh, all those people okay all right um can we talk about something that's kind of hard to talk about um so when i work investigations like this i like to keep an open mind on everything and part of keeping an open mind is listening to you talk about your wife and your marriage. And the day she goes missing is the day that you guys have marital discord. Okay? So you can understand uh, uh, what I'm thinking about you. Yeah. What do you think about that? Okay, so that's where we will end this part on Discovery Page 1224.
and uh, you can see coder has been uh, prying a little bit more and more as uh, we went through this part certainly covering a lot of ground with regards to Chris's story about what happened um, and uh, you know his interactions with friends certainly coders uh, already I mean very far along in picking up on Chris's lies and um, coders just slowly taking him through it's a, it's a, I think I've said this before but it's an amazing balancing act of a coder trying to show that he doesn't know uh, you know anything when clearly we uh, we know in hindsight that coder um, has to to be in the know as to Chris's involvement uh, things are just not adding up and you could see the buildup as coder gets to the point uh, where we ended there uh, starting to turn the tables now on Chris and uh, that should be very interesting in the next part as to we you know where we see coder start to push against Chris a little bit uh, now um, and uh, Chris tries to do his best to talk his way through it but um, he's already completely behind the eight ball um, just some interesting things in this part um, are you know Chris is literally giving the is kind of doing the investigation for them I know I've talked about this in the past where Chris has to try to play both roles and um, he's basically just um, outlining all of the reasons why all the arrows point back at him you know he's answering questions like um, you know do you think Nicole or Nick would have anything to do with this no you know do you think any of her other friends would have anything to do with this uh, no, you know, things don't make sense. And he's just uh, uh, in, in, in trying to uh, look like he's a concerned father or whatever, he's just very much giving himself away. It's quite fascinating, actually, as we go through this to see um, Coder's slow and steady approach and uh, really how brilliant uh, some of these detectives are and, quite frankly, the training that goes in behind this. So. So more to come, and I thank you, as always, for listening. I thank you for your comments. I'm sorry I can't uh, always get back to all of them, but uh, please know that I read them, and I, uh, I always welcome your thoughts and, uh, most importantly, your support. In loving memory of Shanann, Bella, Celeste, and Nico, God, please bless the Rusek family wherever they are right now. We ask you to give them peace. Um, let them know that you know the world out here loves them and that uh, we just we care so much about them and we ask that you give them strength in all that they do in the days weeks months and years to come this is the diplomat have a great day